This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make it with Squarespace. Today I'm going to be turning these very popular and well-known works into something a little bit more illustrated and my style. Basically this is a hashtag draw this in your style but with classical? Classic? Classical music. Classic art? Historical art. Famous art. Look, let's just begin. <laughs> I just think it's really interesting especially to turn these really realistic paintings into something that's a little more illustrated or cartoony, whatever you want to call it. It's just fun to see the different ways different artists interpret different things. So obviously, as you can see already, I had to start off with Mona Lisa. Whenever I think famous painting, I automatically think of the Mona Lisa. So off we went. It was really interesting with all of these pieces, but mostly for the Mona Lisa to really dissect or interpret what I was even looking at. It was so hard. There's just so many things. I don't understand what's happening. A lot of these pieces are very dark. I don't know if it's because they're old, so they just got dark over time, or maybe the images that I got weren't the best. But a lot of these are very dark, so it's hard to see the details. And then it's just, what I, what's happening behind the Mona Lisa? I don't understand. It looks like a magical world from Lord of the Rings does not look like anywhere in real life. I don't know what's happening with that veil over her head. She's got a lot of cloth draped around her. It looks like there's a piece of material that goes over her shoulder, but then it also looks like it kind of goes over her hair and then over her head. But it's so see-through. How? Where did they get that material that looks like plastic wrap? I don't understand. <laughs> because it looks like on top of her head there's a veil and then it like goes over her forehead. So I don't know. That's what I took from it. Um, it was just... I feel like the hardest part about this was just what was happening. I don't know what was happening. Then her clothes just have so much going on, I honestly couldn't understand her clothes. It kind of looked like she had puffy sleeves, but then I could only see that puffy sleeve on the right side. Was it also on the left side? I didn't know what was happening. I think overall I was just very confused with creating this piece and it just looks very different in comparison. Have you ever really looked at her face? She just looks kind of sassy. Like, I almost suspect that she's up to something. It almost looks like she farted and she's like, heh, I just farted, no one knows. Like, she just got this, she has this weird look in her face, like she's trying to hold back a smile. And then where are her eyebrows? Why does she have no eyebrows? So, thankfully not having eyebrows doesn't look weird in my style, but she doesn't have eyebrows. When it came to coloring, oh boy, I thought my colors were earthy when I colored things, but I really had to, I don't know, I couldn't go as earthy as they went. It's just her skin was very yellow and I couldn't, I couldn't do that. Everything about it, like I said, was just so dark and I just, I didn't want to make everything super dark because as earthy as I like to go, it was too earthy. And then I will admit the background was kind of very vague, but it's there. But with, of course, the iconic Casey Clouds. And there you go. That is my Mona Lisa. I did do white borders because I do think that's very classic Casey, but I don't know. This, this was a puzzle. Our next painting is Bay Horse and White Dog by George Stubbs. And the reason why I wanted to do this piece is, well... For some reason, when I Google famous painting, it was the first one to come up above Mona Lisa, which I found weird. But also you guys know just how much I love drawing horses and dogs. So I thought this would be the perfect piece to recreate in my style because, well, the reason why I like drawing horses and dogs so much is because they are fun to really push the stylization of them and to just make them look very weird and stupid. So that's why I like to draw horses and dogs and that's why I was really drawn to this piece, so I had to make it. When it came to the background of this piece and the other pieces, I really had to ask myself, did I want to recreate the whole piece as is into my style or did I want to recreate the piece as if I were to draw it. What I ended up settling with was drawing this as if I were to draw it. I was going to go fully into my style. So you'll see I do a lot of things like creating white borders, not filling up the whole page, 
simplifying the backgrounds and just overall making them look so much, I guess, like an iconic Casey drawing and not so much like I'm trying to recreate their art in the way that they did it, if that makes sense. So obviously things like stylization, color choices, especially things that I changed a lot. And then of course, simplifying and kind of picking what I actually drew. So the background on this image, there is a lake in the background and you can see things fading off in the distance, which I thought about doing, but I really wanted to do the classic Casey oval bottom and then the circle for the background where things break the border. I just, I had to do it because that's what I do. What I really loved about this piece was the tree in the background. It's just really interesting and windy and there's just pieces going everywhere. And I thought that would be the perfect time to draw my little windy trees. The ones that kind of look like the same way I draw my cactus, cacti. It probably doesn't look exactly like the kind of tree that he drew, but I thought it would be really interesting to do it the way I do it. Though I do think that when it came to drawing the horse, I was a little influenced by the fact that his was more realistic. I know my horse obviously doesn't look realistic, but there are parts of it that are aren't as stylized as I would draw my horses. But overall, I do think it's cute. I do think it's silly. Something that I ended up changing my mind on was adding a bush to the left because I just felt like the dog wasn't popping off the page as much as I wanted it to. Which again reminds me that look how dark the original piece is compared to mine. Like I said, I thought my colors were dark and earthy, but compared to realism in the old real paintings and stuff, mine looks so vibrant in comparison. It just seems so weird to me. So that is this piece. I loved drawing the horse and dog. It was fun. So for our third and final piece, I knew I wanted to do something with my Posca pins because Posca pins are a very, I feel like such a different style, not only for me, but for the classic realism paintings, or I guess in this case, we're not really doing a realistic painting, but it's definitely a different style of painting. So this is the painting, The Scream. I was really drawn to the colors and just how different this one is compared to the other ones. It's a little more abstract. And I wanted to see what I could do with it, especially that face. I could already see my classic Casey weird, screamy, sad faces on this person or whatever this is. I'm pretty sure it's a person, but it's so creepy and zombie-like. So going into this one, I knew it was going to be a lot of fun just to simplify the shapes of the person, but I went ahead and simplified the entirety of the painting. So I didn't include the two people in the background. You don't really see the bottom of the bridge. You just see the railing of the bridge. And I did the old classic me with the white border. And of course we do have that vibrant sunset in the background, which I think, like I said, is what really drew me to this piece. Just a lot of fun, crazy colors on this one. You can see a lot of strokes. And when it comes to Posca pins, you can't get a smooth gradient. Well, I think you can if you use a brush and water and really work with it. But something I like about Posca pins is that I work differently with them. I don't get a smooth gradient. You see every stroke and I create these really fun gradients with my Posca pins and I've done it in the past and I wanted to do it again. So obviously in the original, the scream, you don't have a really smooth gradient. You don't have red, orange, yellow. There is a lot of mix happening, but that's not how I work. So I didn't do that, though I did think about it. But again, I had to tell myself, do what you would do. Draw this the way you would draw it, not necessarily exactly what you are seeing in the painting. So I broke down the main figure into very simple shapes, very simple flat colors, because when I work with Posca pins, I like to work really bold and really colorful. Though I was a little torn on what skin color to use for the character because they're kind of this yellowy, greeny, gray color. And I am limited to my Posca pin colors, but I just, I don't know, making that even more zombie-like character, I just couldn't do it. So I just stuck with a sort of beige color and gave them purple clothes. I gave them the classic Casey crying weird face, which I thought fit pretty well for this piece. I just had a lot of fun with this one, really simplifying the shapes, pushing the colors. The background is very vague. You don't even know what the heck is going on, but I think it represents it. So I think that was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with this one and heck, that's what matters, right? This one's very interesting. This one's so much different than the others, but it's fun and I like it. And there you go.
And there you are, there are my three redraws of very famous paintings. Hopefully I didn't insult these masters. <laughs> They're probably rolling around in their graves, huh? I hope you liked it, that's all that's important. And how am I going to display these pieces? An online portfolio with Squarespace. Great segue, Casey. Why, thank you. Making a website like an online portfolio is super easy with Squarespace. To start, they have so many sleek templates to choose from and their library is always growing. I love their designs. They are so clean, so crisp, just the way I like it. Look at my website here. I'm letting my art speak for itself. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform, which means there is nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. They also have award-winning 24-7 customer service, which sounds great, but it was so easy to navigate and create my own website that I didn't even have to contact them, so I'm gonna have to just take their word for it. If you already have a domain elsewhere, it's easy to transfer to Squarespace. You can manage your online shops, products, orders, inventory, and billing all in one. Wow. Make it with Squarespace. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.